Today we're gonna to take a deep dive on the GarageBand compressors. I'm gonna be showing you stuff that hopefully you haven't heard about before and uh, actually show you where the meter to look at is when you are actually using the compressor. There is a meter that gives you the information and we're gonna talk about that and all the other stuff that the compressors do and in general, how to use it in the most professional manner you possibly can inside a GarageBand. So let's talk about that. These two tracks that you're looking at here are both bass tracks that I have recorded preliminarily for this video. So the first thing I do want to talk about is how much signal strength you should be recording, and this goes for every instrument that you record. This is what you do not want to see down here, okay? So if you look at these numbers on the left-hand side, these are actually percentages, so 0% up to 100%, right? 25, 50, 75. So this is um, looking like it's averaging, we could say around 10% you know, signal. So in a signal to noise ratio, there's way too much noise. All this empty space, we call this noise. Uh, the recorded signal is obviously the signal, right? So this isn't ideal, but there are ways to work around it. But the problem is if you start pulling this up inside of a compressor, you're gonna hear a lot of this noise. So I wanted to address this quickly. Just make sure that when you are recording your bits and your parts and stuff, um, that you're getting something that looks more like this, okay? So this is happily sort of averaging somewhere between 25 and 50. And I think it's sort of peaking out around 75, as you can see right there. So this is a nice, healthy signal, right? We have a nice ratio of noise to signal. So we, as we bring this signal level up or down inside of the compressor, you're not gonna get a bunch of noise. This is important. The signal level is something that you wanna get right at the very beginning of this stage. And if you don't, we will talk about that a little bit later in the video, okay? So anyway, modern bass stack is what we're using for this demo. And here's what it sounds like. basic little funky thing I just did for this video, okay? So um, one thing I'll tell you right now, I do not like this squeeze compressor that comes stock in this plugin. I typically just turn it off and I'll come in here at the bottom and just add a compressor in the last slot in the chain, okay? I personally, you could add two if you wanted one at the beginning, one at the end, you could do that, but we're just gonna be looking at the one at the end, okay? So here's the compressor, we're gonna open it up and I'm automatically just gonna go down and I'm gonna call this, a, I wanna look for like a heavy bass compression, which is right here. Um, of course, there are all sorts of different things you could be doing, but I'm gonna go for bass heavy. So as you can see, that gives us a really serious ratio of 12 to one. I mean, it's above, like anything above eight to one, you could really consider limiting, um, but you know, well, maybe 20 and up. But uh, so anyway, this would be a very heavy compression, which is what I wanna show you. So one thing I do want you to start looking at intently through this entire video, uh, is this meter or either of the meters that I'm gonna be working with, but this meter right here on this particular track, right? So for example, if I put this back up to zero dB, okay, let's put this at zero, and I want you to watch how much signal is passing above this little ball that you see right here, okay? This little ball is a very informative little thing, and there's a reason that it's translucent and it's, well, we'll check it out. Here's what we wanna look at. Okay, so keeping in mind that signal strength that I was talking about, do you see where it's living inside the ball, right? Look. Right? It's staying right inside of there. Now, as we would start mixing this song for say, right? So if this bass is too loud, right? So I would probably bring it down, just, you know, say here, let's listen. So when I bring this volume slider down, you will notice that the loud moments actually peak above the little ball more than they were when we were up here. So let's do that again and I'll just show you. Right, when we're at zero dB, it actually never goes outside or above the, the ball, right? So we're gonna bring it back down. I think it was around, what was it, four? Probably should have made a note of that. Uh, so now let's look again.
right there, right? It's this note right here at the end of the fourth bar. So that's one of those moments that we're gonna wanna grab and sort of make sure that it comes down in level, okay? So uh, what we wanna do is, well, let's open this compressor up again. We're gonna open this compressor, we have it on bass heavy, and a ratio of 12 to one, okay? So what you should understand is that any time the signal goes 12 dB above the threshold point, this compressor will lower the signal level to one dB above that threshold point, okay? So again, for all 12 dB above the threshold point will be reduced down to one dB above the threshold point, okay? A little confusing, um, but I'm trying to be very clear. So what we really wanna be doing, without having to go mental on the math, right? Watch the signal and the ball, okay? As I start bringing in the threshold, okay? So I'm actually gonna, uh, yeah, I'll just do it. Okay, so what we were saying was right here was the sort of the offending, offending note, but here's the loudest one. Okay, so I would say that the attack is a little bit slow on this, so I'm gonna actually make it a little bit faster. And this is uh, the attack time, just so you know. The attack time is how long it takes the compressor to actually compress the signal once it has passed the threshold point, right? So let's look at this again with a faster attack time grabbing this. Yeah, you see how much less over the ball it goes? Okay, so one thing I always recommend is when you're using a compressor, um, you don't wanna use it to like increase any gain, but one way to check to make sure that the compressor isn't working against you is simply to turn it on and off. If you hear that it is much louder or much quieter with the compressor on, you're gonna need to adjust your output gain, which is right here. So let's do that really quickly. Let's just take a listen. I feel like it's getting a touch louder, so I'm just gonna bring it down one dB. Okay, that looks good. So what you should be noticing is this fader is now, you know, or the, the ball, right? And the signal isn't going excessively above that ball. In your mixing world, go back to some of your old mixes and look around. If you see a ton of signal going past the little slider ball, you've got the compressor set wrong, okay? Um, I, I'm guilty of this in the past. I've gone, I've, I've even made videos where I saw it and like, and I'm like, oh geez, like, you know, there's something that slipped through the cracks. But anyway, this is one of the things that you should know. Um, using this ball as sort of the guideline or the limiter point or whatever, however you want to think of the term, is really, really important. Getting the gain structure right before, or like even as you're mixing, is absolutely critical, especially when it comes time to exporting your song. And you know, if you're one of those people out there is like, I export this song and it sounds totally freaking different than it did inside of GarageBand, it's because things like this, the gain structure was not properly set up inside of the program itself and it is very important that you do. It's absolutely positively essential that you get your gain structure right. So do you understand what I'm saying? What I want you to take away from this video is how important it is for you to not let signals exceed past this little ball very much, right? This is all about gain structure and controlling that gain structure throughout the entire mix. I guarantee you guys, uh, if you follow this method, that your mixes, when you start exporting them, will be significantly better and sound pretty much exactly like they do inside a GarageBand, or not, if not exactly like they do inside a GarageBand. That is one of the main reasons your exports don't sound good, is because your gain structure is improperly balanced. Um, now, 
how much compression is going to be up to you, your taste, and your ears, right? It's going to be a balance of, you know, that input gain or the, the, rather the output gain from the amplifiers in this particular case, or if you're using that gain plugin on a more, uh, in a, a different type of signal that was recorded with a microphone, for example, you are going to have to determine how much signal is going to the compressor, understanding that the more you hit that compressor with signal, it's going to hit the compressor harder. That's it. And the compressor is going to be doing more work, right? Across the board, because suddenly the lower volume notes might also be exceeding that threshold point. So it's something to really keep in mind. This is a balancing act and it's going to take you, you know, some experimentation on your side. But I wanted to give you guys some guides on how to get it right, because it's definitely going to be a lot of you sitting there working with it on your own. What sounds good to you in your room, of course, in the kind of song. Um, this is a basic overall guideline of how the compressor works. I keep hammering this point about signal strength and gain structure over and over and over again in all my videos because it is an absolutely critical part of mixing and I still see a lot of people doing this incorrectly and so for the however many of you that actually watch this video, good for you, you're going to be one up on all those people, okay? So take this video to heart, go to your own mixes and take a look and see how much signal is exceeding past these balls here and uh, try to tame it and then give it a new mix and you will see how much better it all sounds. I will say this in this video here at the end, if you've made it, you're gonna get this little tidbit because um, one of the things uh, I always recommend with anybody when you start mixing, if you watch any of my mixing videos, Take the drums, if you're using the auto drummer, just bring it all the way down to negative five dB and leave it there, start with it there, mix the whole song around negative five dB on the drums. The whole time you're mixing, you wanna make sure you hear those drums, okay? But in, invariably, you're gonna start adding guitars, basses, voices, all the other parts of your song. Try, try, try to keep the drums audible in your mix. Now, after you've added all those different layers though, chances are you're gonna to need to bring it up a little bit, but that won't be too much. It should be maybe one or two dB. What happens when you mix this way is that you end up with a ton of headroom and GarageBand loves headroom, especially when it comes to the exporting. Um, so that's it. Take this video, go to your own mixes and apply it. Go look at your mixes and check out your meters and start balancing the balancing act. <laughs> All right, you guys, I hope you got something great and interesting. And I'm, I know you did. I'm really positive. I think this is a, this is a home run video for you guys that get to watch it. I like this one. And so I hope you did too. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. All right, you guys have a great weekend. Peace and love.